Today we will be learning the arithmetic series. Now you already know about arithmetic sequences and you know what series are. So arithmetic series are not that hard to understand once you understand those two things. So arithmetic sequence, just a reminder, is a sequence of numbers. So let's say I'm starting with 1, 4, 7, 10, and each succeeding terms have a common difference, or we add the same number each time to get the next term. This is what an arithmetic sequence is. So for arithmetic series, we just simply add up all these terms. So instead of having 1, 4, 7, 10, etc., we just add the terms together. Okay, so this is what an arithmetic series looks like. And for arithmetic sequences, if you remember, we had a formula for finding the nth term. We called the nth term as um, a sub n. Okay, and that equaled a1 plus n minus 1 times d, where a1 is the first term and d is the common difference. So, if, for example, if you wanted to find the 100th term of this arithmetic sequence, we can just simply plug those in to get the 100th term. So 100th term would be this, and that would equal the first term, which is 1, plus the n, which is 100, minus 1, which is 99, times the common difference, which is 3. So we have 1 plus 297, and that is going to equal 298. Okay, so the 100th term of this arithmetic sequence would be 298. Now, the question emerges, can we do a similar thing with arithmetic series where we can have a formula to add up all the numbers to any number of terms? So if we wanted to add up all the terms until the hundredth term, is there a formula to do that? Um, it's, not easy, it's not hard to derive the formula, actually. So let's try and derive the formula. So by the definition of arithmetic series, we need to add up the first term plus the second term plus the third, oops, plus the third term all the way until the nth term. And we're just calling it n to generalize. Okay, and that can be expressed as a summation from when i equals 1 to n of a i. Right? This i goes from 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4, all the way until n. Okay, And each of these terms for arithmetic sequence has a definition, namely this right here. Each of those terms can be defined with this definition. So for example, the first term can be defined as a1, but it can also be defined as a1 plus 1 minus 1, because n is 1 here times d. 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 times d is 0, so a1 plus 0 is just a1. a2 can also be defined as a2, or sorry, using this formula here, a1 plus 2 minus 1 times d, in which case 2 minus 1 is 1, so we just have a1 plus d. That is how you get a2, right? You just add d to the first term to get a2. So each of the terms in, the, in an arithmetic sequence can be defined with this formula. So we can substitute that formula in here. So the, this summation becomes a1, and I have to put a parenthesis around so that um, to indicate that the summation applies to all the terms in here plus, and notice this is not going to be n minus 1 here. This is actually going to be i minus 1, because 
this has to change depending on which term I have. So if I'm working on the first term, this term has to be 1. If I'm working with the second term, this term has to be 2. And then for the nth term, this is going to be n. Okay, so because this indicates I am adding up all the previous terms, not just the nth term. Okay. Now let's simplify what we have inside the parentheses. That is going to be the summation from i equals 1 to n of a1, and I'm just going to distribute the d like this. Okay. And from here, we can actually use the summation property. Remember, we can distribute the summation to each terms. So let me do the work over here. So now that is going to equal i equals 1 to n of a1 plus summation from i equals 1 to n of i d minus summation from i equals 1 to n of d. And the first term here, the first term and the last term doesn't have an i, right? It doesn't have, it doesn't have i. This has an i here, but they don't, they don't have i. Meaning these are just going to be constants. Both a1 and d are just going to be constants. And remember, if you remember the formula for the summation of a constant, this is, this is just adding a1 n times, right? So if you have a constant, you're adding the, the constant n times, that's just going to equal c times n, right? So this part just becomes a1 times n. And the same thing with here. These, the d is a constant, so this just becomes d times n. Okay, plus this thing right here, we can take out the d. This is also part of the property of summation. We can take out the d to the outside because d is a constant. It doesn't have i. You can rearrange it like that. And to simplify this, this is just the summation of consecutive terms. Do you remember the formula of consecutive integers, I should say? That equals, I don't need the parentheses here, equals n times n plus 1 over 2. Right? You're just adding up consecutive terms. So this, we can substitute that formula in here. And here we get a1n plus d times n times n plus 1 over 2 minus dn. And let's factor out the d. So a1n plus d times n n plus 1 over 2 minus n. We can simplify what's inside the parentheses here. Just looking at what is inside the parentheses, that becomes n squared plus n over 2 minus n. And that becomes n squared plus 2 over 2, sorry, not 2, plus n minus 2n over 2, right? Because that becomes 2n over 2. And then that simplifies to n squared minus n over 2. So all this mess inside the parentheses becomes n squared minus n over 2. So we have a1n plus d times n squared minus n over 2. This would be the formula for finding the arithmetic series. until the nth term. Okay, so if you wanted to add up all the terms until the hundredth term, looking at our previous sequence, remember uh, this sequence right here, the sequence. 
the first term is a 1, and the common difference is a 3. So we have to show it. Yes, the common difference is a 3. Okay, so that's all we need to remember. And we're looking for the hundredth, or the summation until the hundredth term. Okay, so that means first term was a 1, common difference was a 3, and we're looking for the summation until the hundredth term. You can just simply plug these in here. So that's going to be 1 times 100 plus 3 times 100 squared is 10,000 minus 100 over 2. All right, we have 100 plus 3 times 9,000 plus 900 over 2. Can't cancel there, so let's just multiply. Or let's do the division first. 3 times 4, 9, 5, 0. 100 plus. Of course, since this is time consuming, you can always use a calculator. I don't have a calculator with me right now, so that's why I'm doing this by hand. All right, so finally, that. Which obviously is bigger. Remember, our hundredth term was, uh, was it 298? I think it was something like that. What was our hundredth term? Yes, it was 298. Okay, so our hundredth term is 298, but the series until the hundredth term is obviously going to be bigger because we're adding up all the numbers, um, all the preceding numbers, right? So this should obviously be bigger than the arithmetic sequence. Now, assuming I didn't make a stupid arithmetic mistake on my way to my to my answer here, that should be the answer. Okay, so that using this formula, you can get the summation until the nth term of um, arithmetic series.